will start the recitation by doing problems in section 6.1. The first problem we will solve is 1E. Answer the following questions. Is A a subset of B? Is B a subset of A? Is either A or B a proper subset of the other? Set A contains square root 16 and a set that contains 4. Set B contains the integer 4. First, we simplify square root 16 to 4. Now set A contains integer 4 and a set that contains 4, and set B contains integer 4. Now we can see that B is a subset of A, because the only element in B is the integer 4, and 4 is in A. But A is not a subset of B, because the set that contains 4 is an element of set A. But that set is not an element of set B. By definition, a proper subset of a set is a subset that is not equal to its containing set. So B is a subset. Uh, so B is a proper subset of A because this set that contains four is in A, but not in B. Any questions? Next, we will solve three A and three B in section six six point one. For 3a, we are given the definitions of sets r, s, and t. r is the set of all integers divisible by 2, s is the set of all integers divisible by 3, and t is the set of all integers divisible by 6. We need to determine if r is a subset of t and explain our answer. There are integers divisible by 2 but not divisible by 6. For example, 2 is such a number. 2 is in set R, but not in set T, so R is not a subset of T. Part B of this question asks if T is a subset of R. We know that every integer divisible by 6 is divisible by 2, so every element in T is in R. To see why this is so, suppose n is any integer that is divisible by 6 then n equals 6m for some integer m. Since 6m is equal to 2 times 3m, and since, m, and since 3m is an integer, it is the product of two integers. Um, it follows that n is equal to 2 multiplies some integer, and therefore n is divisible by 2. So t is a subset of r. Any questions? Next, we will solve 8a in section 6.1. This problem asks us to write in words how to read this set and write its shorthand notation. How to read the set is stated in the textbook. Here, we read the set as the set of all x in U such that x is in A and x is in B. The shorthand notation is A intersects B. Any questions? Next, we will do problem 10, part A to part E. We are given three sets, A, B, and C. We are asked to find A union B, A intersects B, A union C, A intersects C, and the difference of A minus B. For A union B, we list the elements which are either in A or in B. 3 and 9 appear in both sets, but there is no need to list them twice. For A intersects B, we list the elements in both set A and set B, which are 3 and 9. The same goes for part C and part D. Note that for part D, set A and set C uh, have no common elements, so their intersection is the empty set. For part E, we find the difference of set A minus set B, that is the elements in set A but not in set B, which are 1, 5, and 7. Any questions? Next, we will solve problem 14A. This problem asks us to draw a Venn diagram for sets A, B, and C that satisfy the given conditions. 
first, we can draw a rectangle to represent the universal set. The condition states that A is a subset of B. C is also a subset of B. So A and C can be drawn as two small circles inside a big circle C. A intersects C is equal is equal to the empty set, so the circle representing A should not intersect with the circle representing C. This is the complete Venn diagram. Any questions? Next, we will solve problem 15a. This is similar to the previous problem. We are asked to draw a Venn diagram based on the conditions given. First, we draw a rectangle to re represent the universal set. A is a subset of C, so A can be drawn as a small circle inside a bigger cir circle C. C intersects B is not equal to the empty set, but A intersects B is the empty set. This tells us that circle representing B should not intersect with the circle representing C, but B Oh, sorry, this tells us that um, the circle representing B should intersect with the circle representing C, but it should not intersect with the circle representing A. So we can draw it this way. This is the complete Venn diagram. Any questions? Next, we will solve problem 16A in section 6.1. We are given three sets, A, B, and C. We are asked to find A union the intersection of B and C. A union B intersects C, and the intersection of A union B and A union C. We also need to determine- We which think there is a question about the previous, previous question 15 uh, oh. in the chat. So, so Alisa asks, well, question 15, can B be a subset of C, but does not intersect with A? Um, so go to the previous question. So the answer is yes, but the statement here says for is it true that for all sets A, B and C these properties are satisfied? Can B be a subset of C? No. No. So, uh, because the last statement is C intersect B is, is not empty set. I see. Okay. Can B be a subset of C, but not intersect at all with A? Yes. Yes. So, okay. So there are two Venn diagrams. That's that's ex actually true. So you see that uh, it, it, B can be actually a proper subset of C. So you think? Do you mind if I take uh, the screen? Sure. Okay. This and now. So basically, Alisa is right. Uh, if you think about, it could be the case that you have this set C, which both sets A and B are subsets. It doesn't have to be the case that B is uh, basically uh, 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 is uh, some kind of like, uh, the only thing that it says is that the intersection of B and C is not empty. That means that it could be like this, or it could be like this. But still, A and B cannot be uh, this, uh, uh, equal, uh, because their intersection is empty. So basically, this is A. This could be B. And this could be C. So Alisa is right. There are actually 
two different ways to represent that example is this way or basically the second way and is the one that you think you've wrote the diagram for which is basically that c is here then there is a b and then there is an a that is inside c so there are two venn diagrams of for that uh, exercise there is the venn diagram that you gave and there is this venn diagram which must contain at least one element between c and b but it uh, but uh, it's not the case that b is inside c so it must be at least one element here okay but uh, they they don't have to be doesn't have to be a subset of c so, but in either case, we see that A and B uh, do not have common elements. So, Yunting, do you agree? Yes. Okay, good. So, now you can take the screen back. I will stop my sharing. Yes, you're right. Is this that, isn't it is satisfied that way? Yeah, it's still satisfied. No? So, A intersect b is empty a is a proper subset of uh, or it's a subset of c and c intersect b is not empty so there are two venn diagrams that describe this uh, property and the gave one and i gave the second thank you welcome so um problem 16a uh, in section 6.1 asks us to find these three sets and to determine which of these sets are equal. For the first set, B intersects C gives us um, a set containing elements B, B and C. A union that says gives us the set containing elements A, B and C. For the second set, a union B gives us a set containing elements A, B, C, D, and that set intersects C is B, C, because B, C are the elements in both sets. For the third set, we first get the results of the two unions and take their intersection to get A, B, and C. We can see that the first set is equal to the third set. Any questions? Next, we will solve problem 18, part A and part B. We need to answer two questions. Is the number zero in the empty set? Why? And is the empty set equal to a set containing the empty set? Why? Answer to both questions is no. Since the empty set has no elements, the number zero cannot be in the empty set. For part B, the left-hand side is the empty set, which does not have any elements, but the right-hand side is a set with one element, so they are not equal. Any questions? Next, we will solve problem 27, part A and part D. This problem asks if a set containing multiple sets is a par partition of another set. For part A, the set is not a partition because the sets are not mutually disjoint. Element D is in two, set, two of the sets. For part B, the set is not a partition because a 6 is here, but it is not in any of these sets. So it's not a union. Any questions? Next, we will solve problem 28 in section 6.1. Let E be the set of all even integers and O the set of all odd integers. Is the set uh, containing E and O a partition of C, the set of all integers? Explain your answer. The answer is yes, because every integer is either even or odd and no integer is both even and odd. So this makes it a union and mutually disjoint. So it satisfies both conditions. Any questions? 
that's all for 6.1. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Yunting. Vasuda, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, good. So you can present. And if there are any questions at any time, you can just either unmute yourself or uh, write it in the chat. I'm basically looking at the chat all the time. Okay, we can see your screen, Vasinda. Okay. So, um, we'll be solving some problems from 6.2. So, first, we'll be solving 1A and 1B. Um, the question says, to say that an element is in A intersection B uh, union C means that it is in 1 and in 2. So, if it is A intersection B union C, it means it is in A and it is in B union C. So that's what our answers would look like. Does that make sense? Any questions? That's good. I would write union uh, in letters, so okay, you know, yeah. it's easier to read, uh, but yes. with spaces prior, prior. Okay, good. Yeah. So, and 1B, say that an element is in A intersection B union C means that it is in A intersection B or in C. The next question that we'll be looking at is, uh, any questions for this? Yeah. The next question that we'll be looking at is number seven. Use an element argument to prove each statement in this. So for all sets A and B, A intersection B complement is equal to A complement union B complement. So for all of these, um, these problems where you have to prove using an element argument the equality of two um, two sets like this you use the property that I've written here so I said should I write subset or is this fine subset is better yeah so basically two sets are equal if the first is a subset of the second and the second is a subset of the first yeah so that's how you prove that um, they're both equal to each other. So um, for the element argument, you use, um, yeah. So you um, you first assume an element x to be uh, an element of this. This is A intersection B complement. So This means that X is not, uh, X does not belong to A intersection B. Try to write it, yeah, exactly, in words. Try to write yeah. it in words. It's, it's the easiest, doesn't belong to, and then a mm -hmm. union, the intersection. Can you decrease the font so basically everybody can see everything? Yeah. Is this okay? More, a little bit more. Excellent. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now my, so, my the Morgan. Yeah, we could use the Morgan. I just thought we could. Okay. Okay. You, you do it your way. Okay. So, um, okay, so if A does not belong to A intersect B, then it it's uh, either of the three cases um, where A 
um, x is an element that belongs to A, B, and So we have these three cases. So we prove that in each of these cases, um, we can. Uh, this would always mean that it belongs to A complement, union B complement. So in this case, x if x belongs to A, then x doesn't belong to A complement. So um, and x belongs to complement instead so we have been uh, we could say that therefore x would belong to, to the union yes excellent so this could be um, this could be applied to the second case as well where you just interchange a and b yep does that make sense any questions yes Okay. So in this case, it doesn't belong to either. So it means it belongs to both A complement as well as B complement. So, which means it will definitely belong to A complement and B complement. But this is only the first part of the proof. The second part is to uh, assume that an element belongs to A complement, union B complement, and then Prove that it also belongs to A intersection B complement. So even in this case, you have the Uh, you don't have to put the not part. Basically, you can say that there are two cases. The union says that is a list in one of them. So you can um, put that A belongs to a complement or A doesn't belong to a complement, in which case oh, by right. union it must belong to. Okay, yeah. Doesn't belong. You can actually just say it doesn't belong to a complement. So an element can be or not in a set. So, okay, fine. Okay. So uh, an element belong. So it's about the same set. So you should assume that a x belongs to a complement, and then in the second case that it doesn't belong to a complement. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then it belongs to the other one's complement because the, it belongs to the union. Yes. Okay. So if x doesn't belong to a complement, then x is an element of x is an element of um, a uh, and it would belong to b complement because it is a part of a union b so the x ha um, if x belongs to this and it doesn't belong to one of them then it has to be coming from the other so x belongs to b complement so and it does not belong and it uh, does, I'm sorry, A intersection B complement. Okay. So um, since X belongs to uh, B complement, it does not belong to B. So X wouldn't belong to A intersect B. So, um, okay. so it will belong to its complement. To A, yeah. Excellent. So we repeat the same thing for the other argument. Should I 
Should I do that? So basically, you can just copy it from above. X doesn't belong to B, like the last three lines, and no, no, just those three lines, and then change B with A. No, just the three oh, lines. Sorry. Yeah, 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 sorry. Okay, change A. It doesn't belong to intersect B, and so does. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, any yes. questions? Good. Okay. So the next question that we'll be doing is eight. Uh, all of these have to be proved in a very similar way. So yeah. this time you yeah. can actually show it uh, instead of the element argument, you can use log, uh, set identities just to show another example, another way to do it. Um, okay. By this, uh, the set identities, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we know them. I will just tell you when okay. you need yeah. to so okay. we want to prove that logical equivalence, that uh, set identity. OK, so let's start from the left-hand side. So just copy okay. the left-hand side. You can paste it. You already have it. OK, so now by distributivity of intersection over uh, union, oh, yeah. union, this is equal with, this is equal with A intersect open parenthesis, B union, B complement. Okay. B union, B complement. Okay. And this is equal with by, uh, so this is by uh, distributivity of intersection over union. You can actually write mm -hmm. it in English. By um. distributivity of intersection over union. Yeah. Okay. Now the next one, this will be equal with A intersect universe. U. Yes, That's okay. U. And this it is, is by way. completeness of, of uh, union yeah. over complement. Yeah, right. Okay, you can, uh, yeah by that equal universe. Okay, good. And now by identity law, this is equal with A. A intersect yeah. with the universe is equal with A. And we just proved it. We actually used equality, so you didn't have to mm. prove it both directions. Right, okay, yeah. Okay. We'll be doing nine next. Yes, and, and let's do it also by uh, uh, set, identity set identities, okay. Because yeah. it's hard, it's easier, and it's shorter than actually yes. doing it by element argument proof. The element yes. argument proof you already gave an example, so it's good enough. Okay. So let's start from the left hand side. Delete the uh, last part. Sorry, yeah. You copy too much. Okay, good. So. Uh, a minus B union, union C minus B. B. So we use the complement law. So this will be equal with A, A, A intersect B complement. It's exactly set identities. Yeah. Yes. yes, yes. If, if I'm yeah, saying there was a question that can we use set identities always. I would probably state, in, I will state in the exam that probably for one question use element argument. So then you do that with element argument. And then I will state for others, do them by set identity. You need to know them both. And uh, I need to test them both. Good. So now this is equal yeah. with. Yeah, um, this is equal with. Law with B complement intersect A, union B complement intersect C. Yeah, so just yeah. swap A just, with yeah, B. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Good. So now this is equal with uh, B complement 
intersect yeah. the union of A and C. A union C. Okay. And this is equal by, again, com by uh, commutativity with A union C yeah. intersect B complement. Just, um... This is by commutativity of intersection. And then again, by complement law, this is equal with A union C minus B. And basically, this was all done. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Excellent. So let's see what other formulas. So next one is we can do it in similar way. Let's skip it. Let's see what other kinds of uh, proofs we need to do. So 11 doesn't need to be done, uh, 16. Uh, um, you can do it with element argument proof. Yeah, so okay. let me think, what else do you have there? You have 21, can you scroll down? Yes. Oh, it's a mistake in this proof. Okay. Uh, okay, so 16, 21 are needed. Let's continue down. What okay. is 30? Um, Can we see 30? 30 is all sets. Uh, if a a product empty is equal with empty, and you have to prove it using what method? A, okay. The a element. Method. element. Yeah, okay. a lot of them are elements. So I, 36, it's uh, another example of the element method, I assume. Mm, so, it just says proof, so you could use anything. So you can use anything you want, including, uh, okay. Scroll down, The let's see what other exercises you Th chose. That's it. That's it. Okay, so let's yeah. do them, 16. Yeah. Okay, so for all sets, uh, A, B, and C, if A is a subset of B and A is a subset of C, then A is a subset of B intersection C. So using the... Uh, element argument, we assume uh, an element x. Um, let me just write this down here. We would assume that this statement is going to hold. So x is an element of b. x is also an element of c. So if an, if an x is an element of both b and c, then we could say that x is an element of B intersection C. So if we were to assume that A is a subset of B and A is a subset of C, then it's going to imply that A is a subset of B intersect C. Any questions? Okay. Next question is number 21. Find the mistake in the following proof. Theorem, for all sets A and B, A complement union B complement is a subset of A union B complement. Um, the proof, suppose A and B are sets and X is an element of A complement union B complement. Then X is an element of A complement or X is an element of B complement by definition of union, it follows that X is not an element of A or X is not an element of B. By definition of complement and so, X is not um, X is not an element of A union B by definition of union. Thus, X is an element of A union B complement by definition of complement. And hence, A complement union B complement is a subset of A union B complement. So the mistake here is that it, 
so you have x is an element of a complement or x is an element of b complement it follows that this either of these cases are not true which is fine until here we cannot conclude this part this cannot be concluded from the previous from this because it's possible that it's not an element of A and it is an element of B. And it's also possible that it's an element of, um, it, it is the other way, like it's an element of one of them and not the other. So in which case it would be an element of A union B, which is not being, uh, which is not being taken into account in this proof. So that's the mistake. And it's very common that people could make mistakes like this while proving. So. Um, yeah, it's important to be um, careful about this. The next question, uh, any questions about this? Yeah, so the next question that we'll be doing is number 30. For all sets A and B, if A is a subset of B, then A is a subset of B, then A intersection B complement is null. If A, um, okay, let's have, let's assume that there is an element X in A. So um, if A is a subset of B, X is also going to belong to B, which means that x does not be. And if x, um, I'm sorry, what? x does not belong to b complement. So in this case, we know that for a intersection b complement to be true, we, um, for A intersection B complement to have any element, any element that is in A should also uh, be a part of B complement. But since A is a subset of B, then all the elements, any X, all the elements in A are going to be in B too, which means they'll never be a part of B complement. So, we can uh, safely say that A intersection B complement will be a null set. Is that clear? So the next question that we'll do is for all sets A and B, part A, A, min uh, A minus B union B minus A union A intersection B, is equal to A union B. And B, the sets A minus B, B minus A, and A intersection B are mutually disjoint. So, um, okay. So I'll do this using element argument. Is that okay, Professor? Okay. Yes. So um, we have an element x that belongs to the left-hand side. That is a minus b union b minus a union a intersection b. So it uh, it could belong to either of them or all of them. So in this case, um, a minus
means x belongs to A. X doesn't belong to B. Which means uh, for which means that it's going to be a part of A union B. We could use the same argument again. But, uh, okay, so far, any questions? So the third case is X belongs to A intersect B, which means A belongs to both um, B and B. So X is definitely going to belong to A union B. Now the second part of the proof is to prove that A union B, if, if a certain element X belongs to A union B, then it's going to um, belong to the left-hand side, which is A minus B, union B minus A, union A intersection B. So if X belongs to A union B, we have two cases. There is a question in the chat. Can we prove this by calculating? I'm not exactly sure what that means. Yuchen, if you want, you can mute, unmute yourself to ask what exactly do you mean? Do you mean by set identities? Oh, algebraic proofs, exactly. Okay. So uh, the question is, can you prove it by algebraic proofs? Yes, because mm -hmm. it says prove each and uh, Vasuda is basically proving through uh, element argument proof. But yes, we can do the algebraic proof afterwards if we okay. have time. Okay. It's again a little bit shorter, that's why. Yes, okay. So if X belongs to A, then um, it's going to, if X is going to belong to A, then uh, it's going to be a part of either A minus B or A intersection B. How is this? Yeah. Just to do this. Under uh, the case X belongs to A, we have uh, two cases. Either X belongs to B or it doesn't belong to B. In this case, um, so it belongs. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we could do the same thing for B next. Which is going to be the same thing, but A substituted by B.
Yeah. Is that clear? Any questions? Okay, I think that was the last problem. Okay, thank you very much, Masuda. Palak, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'll share my screen. Thank you. Can you see it? Yes. OK, uh, so I'll be doing exercise 6.3. And these are the problems I'll be doing, the ones that are written on top. So let's start with one. The question is, for all sets A, B, and C, A intersection B, union C, when A, in, A intersection B is in the bracket, and A intersection B union C, where B union C is the bracket, uh, yeah, you have to prove this is false by giving a counterexample. So this is an example. If the set A has 1 and 3, and B has 2 and 3, and C has 4, then we can find A intersection B union C as uh, 3 union 4, which is 3 and 4. So the final set is 3 and 4. And whereas the other part of it, where A intersection B union C, uh, you so you have to find the intersection between 1, 3, and 2, 3, and 4, which is equal to 3. So now if you look at these two lines, uh, sorry, these two lines, uh, 3 and 4 is not equal to 3. And then you can say that A intersection B union C is not equal to A union B intersection C. Sorry, A intersection B union C. The difference is in the bracket. Any questions? OK, uh, the sixth question. Uh, for all sets A and B, A intersection A union B is equal to A. So you have to say if this is true or false, this is true, and this is the proof. So if A and B are any sets, uh, A intersection A union B is the subset of A. So suppose X belongs to A intersection A union B by the definition of intersection x belongs to a as well as x belongs to a union b so because x belongs to a you can say that a intersection a union b is also a subset of a similarly you can also prove that a is a subset of a union sorry a intersection a union b it's a similar proof so suppose x belongs to a then by union you can say that x belongs to a union b as well so by this definition, you can say that x belongs to A intersection A union B, and thus A is a subset of A intersection A union B. Now, because both of these statements are true, we can finally conclude that A intersection A union B is equal to A. Uh, the ninth question now. So for all sets A, B, and C, if A is a subset of C and B is a subset of C, then A union B is a subset of C. Uh, we have to say if this is true or false. The statement is true, and this is the proof. So suppose A, B, and C are sets, and A is a subset of C, and B is a subset of C. This is given. So X, you can uh, assume X belongs to A union B. Now, by union, you can say that x belongs to A or x belongs to B. But when you say that x belongs to A, then x also belongs to C because A is a subset of C. And if x belongs to B, then you can say that x belongs to C because B is a subset of C as well. So in both the cases, you can see that x belongs to C either way. And by this definition, you can see that A union B is a subset of C. This statement is true. Uh, the next is the 18th question. So for all sets A and B, P, uh, power set of A union B is a subset of power set of A union power set of B. So we have to prove this is true or false. And this is false. Uh, the, uh, and I've given a counterexample. 
So for the sets A and B, the power set of A union, the power set of B contains sets that are subsets of only A or B, uh, sorry, either A or B. And the sets in the power set of A union B can contain elements of both A and B. So if at least one of A or B contains elements that are not in the other set, that is the power set of A union, the power set of B, and the power set of A union B will not be equal. And there's also an example here. So if A contains one and B contains two, one, two, one and two in a set belongs to the power set of A union B, but the set one and two does not belong to the power set of A union, the power set of B. So we can say that this is false. The next question is the 25th question. So if A is equal to T, U, V, W, and S1 is the set of subsets that do not contain W, and S2 is, are the set of all subsets that contain W, uh, we have two parts in this, A and B. Uh, yeah, so A, uh, A is to find S1, and B is to find S2, and C is you have to say if S1 and S2 are disjoint. Disjoint meaning they don't have common elements in them. So uh, the A part is S1. S1, uh, I'm not going to read this, but this is the set which doesn't contain W at all. And similarly, S2 is the subset which contains all the Ws. So when you look at S1 and S2, you can see that they don't have a single common element. And Hence, you can say that S1 and S2 are disjoint. Uh, the next is the 27th question. So for this, there's a proof, and it's marked by A, B, and C. So you have to give a property for each of these A, B, and C. Now, the proof is A union B intersection C is equal to A intersection C union B intersection C. This is the distributive law. So now in the proof, uh, uh, A is given by the commutative law, and B is given by the distributive law, and C is given by the commutative law again. So you can see it here. Any questions? OK. Uh, yeah, so the 31st question. Uh, for all sets A and B, A union B minus A is equal to A union B. Uh, we have to prove this. And the proof is that suppose A and B are sets, then uh, by the set difference law, you can say that A union B minus A is equal to A union B intersection A complement. And uh, further on, you can go and prove this by the distributive law and the complement law. I mean, Professor, do you want me to read all the lines or? No, you just show them. But basically, yeah. uh, union distributes over intersections. So we have yeah. A union B intersect A union A complement. A union A complement is the universe. And anything yeah. intersected with the universe is that set. So it's equal with A union B. Yeah, and all the yeah. laws are written on the right hand side. So you excellent. No, 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 because well. the students can pause uh during the video and then they understand all of these steps and they maybe write them on a piece of paper okay i'll be posting this to piazza anyways so they okay. can see it later as well if they thank want you to. let's go yeah. to 44. okay uh 44 b most of these are proofs so uh consider the following set property for all sets a and b a minus b and b are disjoint so you have to use an algebraic argument to derive the property now, uh, if A and B are any sets, then A minus B intersection B is equal to, similarly, this is a proof, and all the all the properties are given on the right-hand side. Excellent. So you can And you get this. empty set at the end. You yeah. can also prove this by uh, the element method. You assume by contradiction that there exists an element in A minus B intersect B, and then uh, by that definition, you actually get every one of these steps that then that element must belong to A intersect B complement, intersect B, but by uh, associativity law for intersection, 
it will belong to A intersect B complementing set intersect B, but that's the empty set. So now we get A intersect the empty set, which is empty set. Therefore, the element cannot belong to that set. Yeah. Good. Next problem. Uh, okay, next is 46A. So we've give, we're given three sets, A, B, and C. And we have to find the symmetric difference. Which basically A and B. move elements that are in the union, but they are not in the... Yeah, this is the formula, so I'll just write that separately. No need, no need. It's, okay. it's in the textbook, actually. And okay. we said that we cannot ask uh, this question because we can't write symmetric difference uh, in the exam. Oh. So let's skip these uh, two questions. Oh, okay, I didn't know that, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. No, no, that's, uh, they can study them if they want. Okay, good. Okay, the, that's it. Then this is the that's last it. Cool. Yeah. Okay, good. So uh, let me present then. Okay, I'll stop sharing. Yeah. Okay, so from the last uh, set of uh, exercises in Boolean algebra, I will show you a few examples of Boolean algebra and we'll find what are the properties in Boolean algebra that were used in each one of the cases. So we have here a proof that A intersect A is equal with A, and we want to prove it step by step. And we are given the steps of the proof. Only thing that we have to fill in is are what are the uh, rule, uh, the properties of Boolean algebra that were used. So let me actually open an editor. I will just align it here. So in the first case, A is equal with A dot one. And let's look, basically we have the Boolean algebra properties and identity law is that A intersect the universe, it's A. So we are going to use it. So this is by identity law. Okay. We have the first one is by identity law. The second one is that one is actually A plus uh, or union, the complement of A. So we have to find that A union the complement of a is one which is the complement law so again i will just write b is actually by complement law one of the complement law the other one, uh, next we have the distributivity of intersection over union so it's by distributivity And you can say even more spe specifically, it's by distributivity of intersection over union. Next one is A intersect A complement is the empty, it's zero in Boolean algebra. So it's again by complement law. And finally, we basically get A uh, a uh, that this is the union with the empty set so uh, boolean algebra union with the empty set is that uh, boolean algebra uh, formula again so this is again sorry by identity law This is basically just filling in the steps of the proof and how did we get from one to another. Similarly, let's solve the next one. So what were the rules used for this? And now we can actually just write them down because we know them already. So we started with A union one, but one is the identity, it's uh, the identity, the complement law. So we can just put it in. I will give you the laws in the exam. So this is by complement law. In the case B is by commutativity of union. In the third case is uh, by identity law. Basically is that A union A is A. And finally, it's uh, by complement law. Next one, let's just scroll down. It's here. 
This is a little bit longer. It's actually a very important property that can be used to prove other properties. So we start from the beginning. A union B intersect A by commutativity. It's A intersect A union B. So it's commutativity of intersection. Then we have distributivity of intersection over uh, a union. So it's this three utility of dot over plus. Then we have the identity law that a dot a, a intersect a is basically a. Then we have uh, also the identity law. Then we have in the next case, we have distributivity again. Then we have commutativity. Then we have uh, the comp one of the complement laws. And finally, we have by identity. So this is very important, this, this formula. You, we should remember it, that A union B intersect A is equal with A. Okay. So you can consider that this is another uh, Boolean uh, algebra identity that you should remember. And then let me show you why you should remember, because it's very useful. So we prove a harder one. Let's choose 10. So 10 basically is a formula that says that for all A, B, A, uh, X, Y, and Z in uh, Boolean algebra, if X plus Y is equal with X plus Z, and X uh, intersect Y is equal with X intersect Z, then Y is equal with Z. So we want to prove that basically we start with one of them, like let's say y, and we want to get to x, okay? But remember that we have this formula. So whatever y is, we can intersect y with the union of y and x, okay? So this is by this example. We actually use this, this is by uh, exercise. This is totally true. Like y is equal with uh, y intersected with y union x for any x and y. We don't need actually the specific case that we have these two uh, Boolean algebra equations. Okay. So now we can actually distribute y. So this will be equal with y intersect y plus y intersect x. This is just by distributivity. Okay. Then by identity law, this is y union. And what we have here is y intersect x. So y intersect x is by com the commutativity is x intersect y. In fact, let's leave the y here. So we just stole step by step by commutativity. And then uh, by the exercise itself, x intersect y is x intersect z. So the first part remains the same. And the second part becomes x intersect z. Okay. It will say by uh, the fact that x intersect y is x intersect z. Okay. Let me see what else we can use x plus y. We need to get to 
a formula that after distribution we have x plus z hmm. okay this is harder than uh, it's a hard exercise so it's harder a little bit than i expected so let's let's continue and maybe we get to the exam to the problem that we want so this is by identity law y union the rest by identity okay let's see how else can we play with these two formulas that okay okay I actually can't see how to get to Z yet is there another formula that we can use y x up to now everything is fine we still need to use x plus y is x plus z we haven't used that yet plus y is x plus z maybe I shouldn't have distributed. Let's see what happens if I change it here. So this would be equal with by competitivity with y. This is x. Okay. Then this will be equal with plus y is x plus z so let's replace this with z by the formula that is given to us x plus y is x plus z and then now we can use distributivity so this will be equal with x y intersect x and y intersect z now this becomes x y and this becomes y z and now uh, we already had it above so what did we get here by actually we use the other formula which basically says that x y so here we can do computativity and we get x y and yz can stay the same or maybe we do competitivity twice let's see what we get so now xy will become uh, xz and the second part becomes yz again is it correct i think the first term is xz I'm sorry, what? Uh, the first term is xz. X, yeah, that's true. xz, and the other one is yz. Okay. We can use commutativity again to get z and the other two, but why do, do we need that? because we want to get rid of one of the variables we don't want to add more variables so what's the issue here we want to get rid of one of the variables so x it's we still have it and so with y is there a way to get rid of one of the variables 
what I want to get to is the same example that we had before that we want Z intersect Z and something else a union let's say Y and we know that that is equal with Z because of the same exercise 3 so we want to get to a formula where we eliminate one of the two variables So we did distribution and then we uh, changed the uh, commutativity and then we got ZXY is XZ. Oh yeah, exactly here, this is the step. So now we can use commutativity again and we get Z intersect X plus Z intersect y by commutativity and this is z intersect by distributivity x union y and this is by distributivity and now this by uh, this is equal with z dot instead of x plus y y plus uh, z plus y this is the second formula that we get here z plus y or let's see x plus x y is x plus x. yeah it's x plus z x plus z and this is by the second thing that this two this is true and now this is equal with z it took, it took us a bit of uh, a hard work, but we did it. Excellent. And this was done again by exercise. I think you can get it shorter in a shorter number of steps, but uh, I think this is good enough. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think it was a great lecture. And uh, we will post the solutions that we wrote for these recitations online on uh, Piazza. In fact, I will just post this as is in uh, Piazza. Okay, that's all for today. I will stop the recording, put the recording on uh, Google Drive afterwards.